Hey, John Tai here, and welcome to the Self Publishing Summit. Got a great guest for you today. He's a publisher at Morgan James Publishing, which we'll talk about uh, as we go through this interview, uh, in New York, and is one of America's leading book publicists. Uh, he works with many of the top editors, literary agents, and publishers in America, including Simon and Schuster, HarperCollins, and Random House. And he's worked with best-selling authors such as Stephen King, President Jimmy Carter, Sophia Loren, Salman Rushdie, John Grisham, Yogi Berra, Henry Kissinger, Jack Canfield, Arnold Palmer, Jackie Collins, and Whoopi Goldberg. And that's just to name just a few. Uh, he's also the co-author of 18 books, including Guerrilla Marketing for Writers and Author 101, The Insider's Guide to Publishing. Our guest today, Rick Frischman. Rick, welcome to the Self-Publishing Summit. Ah, thank you. Great, uh, great to be here. Where are you? I love technology. Where are you today? So I'm in England. Uh, and I'm about if you, about 50 miles west of London, 15 miles south of Oxford. If you know either of those two places, I, so. I used to. I lived in in London as a. Uh, I studied there in Chelsea, so I know just where you are. I'm okay. very jealous. Yeah, well, I used to live before I came back uh, here. This is where I grew up, but uh, I was in London for seven years, just across the river in Battersea. So, so we used to go across to Chelsea quite often. <laughs> nice part <laughs> of town. It. Yeah, yeah, right on, on the river there. So beautiful. yeah, really, okay. really nice part of town. Yeah, and uh, and you're in New York, right, at the moment? Uh yes, in New York, uh, actually in Long Island, which is just uh, everyone know you know east of New York City, uh, where uh, it's a little bit more sane. So yep, New York. Nice. So, so Rick, I, that was a really brief intro because you know you've got a you you were mentioning just before we kicked off you you've been in this industry thirty nine years so. You've done a lot more than that. That was just a couple of brief highlights. Could you give us a quick overview of you know yourself and and, and what you do in the industry, and then we'll we'll get into some of the the different publishing models that we were chatting about a moment ago. Sure, great. Um, so I started. I'm as you can see, I'm a very old person. I started in 1976 uh, uh, when publishing. You know, was uh, I'm publishing is a crazy model and, and it's gone through a lot since 1976 mm -hmm. um, and uh, I ran the biggest book PR firm in America and that's how I, I worked with every major publisher Simon Schuster, Harper Collins, Hyperion etc and when they had a book come a big book come out um, they hired me to do publicity for uh, all these famous people Sophia Loren, Jimmy Carter etc um, and they actually paid for it a lot of the time. Uh, it was a different model back then. Mm. Um, uh, then a guy named Wayne Dyer came along, and uh, he came out with the erroneous zones. This is around 1976, and said, "Look, you know, to the publisher, uh, I, you know, you're not doing anything for me." And he he uh, went around the country and put books in the trunk of his car, and he hired us to do publicity. And all of a sudden. Pub, um, authors said, wow, I can do things myself. So I don't have to wait for the publisher. I can actually yeah. promote the book. And um, so we started working with folks uh, who were unknowns, mm. uh, like Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield in uh, 1993 and Harv Ecker and um, uh, Nelson DeMille. I mean, you know, they, we want to talk about, you know, Barbara DeAngelis, uh, Barbara Taylor Bradford. So nonfiction and fiction and what became apparent is is you know don't wait for your publisher to do things yeah. for you because they're not going to do it uh, mm -hmm. i even remember a lot of folks who uh, got a big advance remember big advances years ago um I, and even them, yeah. <laughs> and even after they got a big advance i have one client of mine got a million dollar advance and the publisher did nothing for them wow. and uh, i think the publisher would be kind of invested there wouldn't you one would think, but publishing is an ass backwards business. That's the one lesson, folks, that you got to understand. It, mm -hmm. It's actually a, a model from um, the 30s, uh, from mm -hmm. the Depression. It doesn't make any sense anymore, mm -hmm. which is why we're going to talk about the new publishing models and how, you know, for everyone watching today, this is good news because we don't <laughs> need Simon Schuster and HarperCollins anymore. Yeah. Um, you and I met through Brendan Bouchard. You heard me speak at Brendan Bouchard's, and he's my baby. You know, and, and I published his book and kind of taught him. Um, and uh, we'll talk about you know how thing what we did with Brendan, and how things have changed. 
Uh, but the publishing model is, is from the depression. I mean, uh, it doesn't work. We, we wait, you know, we give uh, them our rights. We wait a year and a half to two years for them to bring out our book. You know, they got a few books in the bookstores. You know, we, uh, the publisher has to pay shipping into the bookstore. Mm. You know, they sit there for three months. You know, if they don't sell, then they send them back, and the publisher will have to pay shipping back. They come back damaged. <laughs> um, then, uh, then it, it, they'll sit in a warehouse. We got to pay for the warehousing of the books, which is stupid. Um, which the cheapest thing is after the books come back is actually what the publishers do is they destroy them because yeah. it's cheaper. So, and and this is you know it hasn't changed in. In since 1932, I mean 1929. Actually, it hasn't changed since you know Shakespeare, you know, <laughs> started his book. You know, so yeah, um, it, it's just a stupid model, which is why yeah. we're, we're doing things differently. But uh, so we work with all of these authors over the years. Um, there's a guy I worked with who couldn't get a book published because publishers are brilliant. I mean, you know, smart guys. Um, he he wrote a novel. Everyone said this is a terrible. And he went around the country and sold the book out of the trunk of his car, uh, just like um, uh, uh, we were talking about Wayne Dyer. And, mm. and finally, you know, he got a contract. Uh, and, and this guy's name is John Grisham. The book was called A Time to Kill. No one wanted it, you yeah. know, until he, he got <laughs> another contract for the firm. Yeah. And, and actually, we did John Grisham. I was with him. Uh, and he said A Time to Kill was his favorite book. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, actually, if you think about uh, a lot of the, the guys we worked with uh, over the years, Ken Blanchard, um, One Minute Manager, yeah. uh, and Spencer Johnson. They self-published uh, because, you know, uh, publishers are dumb. I mean, when it really comes down, to it, they don't get it. Um, and they're not always making the right decisions. Uh, yeah. Lastly, you know, Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield, I mean, they – uh, I met them in 1993. They were turned down by 143 publishers. They all said, you know, chicken soup, we don't get it. So, uh, uh, and they ended they're up they're kicking themselves now. <laughs> yeah. And I know I talked to all these publishers and man, I turned them down. You know, I talked to Larry Kirschbaum, who's head of Warner Books. He said, I turned down Mark Victor Hansen because he was kind of a kook, you know. And, uh, the deal he got with Health Communications was with Health Communications, Peter Vexo was literally about to go bankrupt when he signed Mark and Jack. And mm -hmm. the deal is was, look, if you agree to buy back at least 20,000 books, if I don't sell them, I'll publish you. And they said, okay. And, you know, we started doing publicity. No one got it. And then, you know, what are we, 150 million books later. So, uh, so publishing is a, a crazy business. And, um, Let's talk about the models. I mean, that's yeah. the, the first model, which is what we've been talking about, uh, to get published. And by the way, now's a great time to get your computer out or a pen because I'm going to give you some sites that are going to help you. So this is a teaching session as well. So everybody, you know, right. get, get ready. Um, uh, the first thing is let's talk traditional publishing, the, you know, the model of the 30s. Um, uh, the model of William Shakespeare, basically, that hasn't changed since, you know, 1503. Um, but now the first thing you need to do is have a proposal. Everyone, no matter what you do, even mm -hmm. we're going to talk about three publishing models, but, uh, traditional, self-publishing. I mean, right behind you, it says self-publishing summit. So obviously we'll talk about that. <laughs> and hybrid yeah. publishing, which is a combination of, of all of, of, of both. No matter what, you need a book proposal, and that's your homework number one. Um, no matter which model you're doing, and that's sort of the business plan for your book. Um, and I have a, a book that will help you with it. And by the way, I teach all authors to have their book. Here is my newest book, uh, Author 101. And we actually had a student uh, come to, to Brendan Bouchard and see me and, and did a free software, much smarter guy than I am based on this book on how to write a book proposal. Um, and I'm going to tell you the software. I'm going to tell you what should be in the book proposal. The software is BP, which is for book proposal, mm -hmm. wiz, dot biz, B-I-Z. Now, I hate anything that's not dot com, but it's dot, you know. So actually, well, you can also get it at ricksbookproposalwiz.com. 
if you'd like, goes the same place. Rick's yeah. book proposal, whiz.com. It's free. I don't make any money. It's a student who did it, and it's based on my book. But basically, it's well, your that's business useful. Thank plan. you. And, and uh, I, we just had author one on university in Los Angeles. We had hundreds of folks come and pitch editors and agents, and they many of them use this software um, and had their book proposal done in like two days. So it works really mm -hmm. well. But basically, here's what's in there. Number one is the title of your book. And I want you to write down at least five different titles of your book. Um, mm -hmm. And they should be one to five words. Where's your wow? Blink. Guerrilla publicity, etc. cetera. Um, uh, one to five words. And you need to own the URL. I'm going to give you another website. Rick's uh, Cheap Domains. Rick's Cheap, because we want everything cheap, domains, D-O-M-A-I-N-S dot com. That's my private label of a bigger site. But we give it away at cost, so it's only nine ninety five, and we don't raise it. Um, and I want you to get your name. I want you to get misspellings of your name. Like your name sucks, you know, because it's a weird spelling. T i g h e. You're on the radio, and you say, yeah. John, how do you even how do you pronounce your last name? Rick, I've had that in time. I've had this all my life. <laughs> right. I've heard it mangled in so many different ways. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> so you got to own every misspelling of your name of Ty, you know, so let's see, I, T -I, <laughs> T -I, -E. I mean, how do most people spell, you know, I mean, the simplest, yeah, that's common one. yeah, you know, so get John Ty, get John Ty author.com, John Ty speaker.com, my John Ty, um, author John Ty, all different variations of your name. So this is a lesson for folks yeah. out there, right? So everybody's um, doing this, yeah. Yeah, so do that tonight. When we get off the phone, we'll get, uh, <laughs> write down you know, five different titles, one to five words, just the, the title. Uh, the subtitle is the promise of your book, so you don't need that. So it's like, mm -hmm. for instance, here is Author 101. I own Author101.com. The subtitle is The Insider's Guide you can read to Publishing from Proposal to Bestseller. That is the... The subtitle of the book, that's the promise of the book. But yeah. you need to own just, you know, author101.com or whatever. I have a book, 250 Rules of Business. I own 250rules.com. Um, and then you can, you should have a site for each one, um, which has, you know, ethical bribes and, and information about you and uh, bios and streaming video and streaming audio, et cetera. So, but five titles, all right, and subtitles. In your proposal, I want to know that you own all these URLs. So what I'm teaching you, you put down. Mm -hmm. I own the titles, the URLs for all this. I own, here are my websites. The first thing that I will do as a publisher is do a Google search and see what comes up. Mm -hmm. And I want to see your website. I want to see, again, testimonials, streaming videos. I want to see what shows you've been on in the past um, and everything about you. So another homework assignment, check out Rick Frischman, R-I-C-K, F R I S H M A N dot com. We just redid it. I have 18 books, but that's my speaker author site. So that's one site. If you check me out on Google, it's the first place that comes up that you'll see all about my books, what I do about my events. Again, testimonials, you know, um, everything you need. So you all need to have that as well. All right. So in your book proposal, we want your titles. I want 15 chapter headings, and this will help you write the book. Mm -hmm. What are you going to teach me in the book? If you're a novelist, all this, you know, you need to write the whole book and send me the whole book. So I'm right, for the moment, I'm talking about nonfiction. You need to do a comparative analysis. What other books are out there that are similar to yours? Hmm. Uh, and why is yours better or different? So it's a little bit like uh, my books, like John Gray's book, you know, Men Are For Mars, Women Are For Venus. However, you know, that was written in 1983. This is 2015, and I'm a psychiatrist, and I have all these other things, blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. don't tell me that there's never, ever been a book written like mine, <laughs> because then there's a reason for it, okay? So there have been, but mine's better and different. Yeah. Um, then uh, important uh, is who are you? What's your platform? How many people, you know, Get your newsletter. How many people on your blog? How many people do you follow you on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter? Um, do you have a YouTube following? One of my clients, we 
Um, we just got a big contract for her because she had 50,000 people following her on YouTube. Mm. Very important. Um, you know, uh, are you a professional speaker? Do you have a self-publishing summit? You know, what do you do, you know, that where you're out there? Do you travel around the country? Um, and then what are you going to do to promote the book when it comes out? It's a different world. Now to get a publishing contract, the publisher doesn't do it for you. We want to know what you're going to do. So you're going to hire a PR firm. You know, don't say, oh, I'm going to get on Oprah because we don't believe you. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, oh, I have been on Oprah, I have been on the Today Show, I have been in USA Today, and they're all on my site, and I can get on them again. Okay, I've been on 200 radio shows, and they all want me back. This is what we want to hear. You know, what are you going to do when the book comes out, and how many people are in your herd, basically, uh, as Dan Kennedy would say, that, that love what you do and will do your book in the future. Uh, so this is, no matter how you're going to get published, the first step is you need to have this book proposal, which is the business plan for your book. It will help you write the book once you have the 15 chapters, and it will also help you get a literary agent and a publisher in the future. So uh, check out the Rick's book proposal, whiz.com. There's lots of books on how to write a book proposal, by the way, not just mine. Um, but you need to do that step one, no matter what you're going to do. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to step two. Now you have this wonderful book proposal. That gets you a literary agent. In traditional publishing, you're not going to get to a publisher unless you have a literary agent. Um, an unagented book goes right into the slush pile. So it's very hard to get a literary agent unless you have connections. Um, I have a list of my top, I work with about 100 literary agents, uh, a list of, of the ones that I work with, you can get it at rickfrishman.com and get my Rolodex. That's my freebie, and that's what you should be doing. But it's a tons of great information. It's also my uh, and a lot of my books. But there are a lot of other books. John Kremer, who I think you interviewed, has has books. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Dan Pointer has a great site, powerpublishing.com. Another self-publishing guru. Um, there are a lot of great books out there uh, that will help you. Um, uh, there's literary marketplace, but they list like every agent that has ever lived and you don't know who's good and who's bad and it's like anything in the world, you know, it, and it's very hard to get to them uh, unless you go through a connection um, mm. uh, or come to a conference like Author 101 or come to, uh, to, to here where we talk about agents and, um, but I can help you find literary agent, but you need a good proposal. That gets you the literary agent. The literary mm -hmm. agent works with editors at all these major houses, and they send the proposal in. And the editor sits on a publishing board and then says, look, you know, this is coming through an agent. I really like this author. Um, I want to publish this book. And the publisher uh, makes a decision, yes or, or no, and then whether or not they'll give an advance. The typical advance for an unknown author is about, you probably know, what do you think, John? Uh, how much for a typical man for an unknown first -time author? author? Yeah, um, I, I would imagine a lot of them don't get an advance, but maybe five thousand dollars less. Exactly, most don't get any advance at all, and the typical advance is fifteen hundred dollars or less. I didn't realize how do you like that? Was that? <laughs> um, and then, so if they say yes, you, they will give you a contract, which is horrible. Don't ever, ever, ever sign a contract with a publisher unless you have a literary agent or a literary attorney at your side. Mm. Because every publishing contract is designed to screw you in so many ways you don't know, and you're not going to understand. And, and don't get a regular lawyer. They know nothing about an intellectual property law. Yeah. Okay? I'll just uh, jump in with something here, Rick, because I was a corporate lawyer before I became an entrepreneur. And... Uh, you know, I was practicing up until about, I guess, about six, seven years ago. Uh, one of the things that was drilled into us from the very, very beginning was that, you know, you have your area of law, but if it's not corporate law, if it's, you need something with uh, intellectual property or pension law or taxation or something like that, you know, you go and work with one of the tax specialists or the pension specialists or the intellectual property specialists. Not that you don't have a, an awareness and, an, and a broad understanding necessarily of what they do, but there's so much legislation that only a specialist can really keep on top of all of it. And you just got to miss one thing, which as a layperson or as a lawyer who's not qualified in that area of law, 
it's very easy to do. Um, and so it's something that all the law firms, you know, the top law firms will just sort of drill into people. And so it's a, it's a great lesson for anybody who's, who's got a publishing contract. Exactly. I, I mean, when I, I did a four book deal a few years ago and my literary attorney, uh, said, you see this one clause I'm getting out of the contract? He said, if I don't get this out, you're going to get one half of all the, the royalties you're entitled to for the rest of your life. Just this one clause, and I yeah. had no idea. And a regular lawyer doesn't know either. I mean, they don't know these contracts. So you need a literary attorney. I have a ton that, you know, I work with this guy, Peter Hoppenfeld, his family. I work with Lloyd Jass, a number of literary attorneys. Um, and, of course, a lot of literary agents who, you know, know these contracts inside out. Um, mm. Now the interesting news. All right, you, so you get your $1,500. Uh, you get a contract with HarperCollins or one of the big guys, and uh, they uh, agree to take your book. They will get your book out in 18 months to two years. By the time they get it out, I mean, everything in the book is old. Uh, <laughs> they'll edit your book, whoopee. Um, they'll print it. You know, they'll do the design. They'll get a few books into bookstores. They will do no publicity and no marketing. But they take your intellectual property rights. Very important. Now you've sold them your soul. They own your rights. And it's hard to get it back often. Mm. Um, and, you know, they'll get it up on Amazon. But, uh, but you probably have very little to do with the cover, very little to do with any decisions because you just sold them everything. So why do it? Is you're asking yourself, yeah. and yeah. and not exactly because, selling it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I don't know. I mean, the reason to do it is if they given you a lot of money, really. Yeah. If they but say you know we want your dollars. books, and here's a million dollars or two men, we'll get to that. Um, other than that, just to have the Simon Schuster in the back of your book, it's like you know they'll probably get a little bit better distribution, but a lot of folks, like millions of folks, are saying you know what I don't need them anymore. So, and uh, we do down the road if they give us the money. But other than that, it's like, man, I, I, I don't know if it makes sense anymore. And that's why this is a good time for you as an author because everything has changed. We don't have to be in the era of the depression um, and the model uh, that worked in the 40s because now it's 2015 and we don't have to deal with these bozos if we don't want to, okay? <laughs> Um, and I say that lovingly. All right, so let's let's go to step two, which is um, the other end of the spectrum, which is self-publishing. Now, it used to be self-publishing was you printed all the books yourself, you did all the design yourself, you edited the books yourself, you did everything, you printed 20,000 books and put them in your garage. And yeah. people would spend twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and have all these books in their garage no one wanted them. They had no distribution. There was no way of selling them. And they said, I'm an author. Yeah. And I've been into somebody's garage where they've had stacks and stacks of boxes of books. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's crazy. I mean, I have, I've had clients who come to me and say, look, I, I've spent $50,000 and I now have 20,000 books in my garage. What do I do? And basically I said, you know, Get a really good, I'm going to give you a really good lawyer to sue the people that got you into this deal because you got royally screwed. So now Dan Pointer always loved the way people did that. And he's the self-publishing guru, power of publishing. But now there's technology and there's a better way. So I don't mm. recommend generally almost anybody doing it that way. I mean, it's just so complicated. And why reinvent the wheel? Why spend that money? So now we have the new way, which is print on demand. And there's good and there's bad. And people aren't told the bad. So I want people to understand okay. everything. So print on demand is the nice thing is it's on demand. You book, we, we print one book at a time. So we go to folks and there are thousands of, of outfits out there. Most of them suck. You know, the biggest ones are owned by Author Solutions. Um, and they own Author House and Ex Libris um, and uh, iUniverse. And I used to actually do all the marketing publicity for iUniverse. And then they were bought by Author Solutions. And they bought up 15, 20, and they actually run the self-publishing division um, 
for Hay House, um, and they have their own self-publishing division, which is called Balboa, and they mm -hmm. set up self-publishing divisions for tons of other publishers, Thomas Nelson, et cetera. And a lot of these publishers are making more money from their self-publishing division than their other stuff because there's a lot of things you shouldn't, that you need to be aware of, which we're going to get into in a moment. Um, so there are also like Lulu and, mm -hmm. you know, many other ones. The, the one that I, if you're going to go this route, which is probably the best is CreateSpace, mm -hmm. which is owned by Amazon. And again, you get in for like 500 bucks or very cheap. They, you just send them your manuscript in about three months. They'll have your book done. You know, they'll get it up on, on Amazon and you have your book. Um, here's the, the thing you, you all need to be aware of with all of these self publishers, print on demand is there are no books in stock. Someone orders the book today. It's printed this mm -hmm. afternoon. It's shipped tomorrow. Boom. So they have one book in stock. Um, if you want to order a lot of books for your own personal, use they charge you a lot of money um and the negative is they try to upsell you lots of junk you don't need and that's where they make mm -hmm. your, their money so i have just spoken to we, we had several hundred people coming off from one un university just now in, in los angeles several or a lot of them went to many self-publishing houses. And what happens is, oh, they think you're getting in for $500, but they get upsold all this junk they don't need. And the average person is spending $8,000 on junk they don't need. That's quite a big upsell. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it's, and, it's used, and they upsell marketing and this and press releases and all this mm -hmm. stuff, which is junk. So don't mm -hmm. buy it's, any of it. That's number one. Yeah, it's very seductive, Number, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's very. And now I'm a I'm a published author, but the average self-publishing book with a POD house sells under a hundred books in its lifetime. And usually, the only people that buy your book are someone that either birthed you or married you. <laughs> so, now there's a couple of negatives you need to understand. It's a great first way to get going, um, because you get your book out. And it's kind of the minor leagues of publishing, which is which is nice, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're playing in Yakima, Washington. But if you want to play in the big leagues, you got to go somewhere else. But it's a great first step. And here's the negative. Um, but the positive is you can get the book out fast, and you keep you retain your 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 rights. Very important, your intellectual property rights. Mm -hmm. um, at least you have a book out, um, and you can sell books on Amazon. The negative is the books will never be in a bookstore. I don't care what they say. They can check a box to get a bookstore. They're not returnable. So bookstores don't want a print-on-demand book. Maybe they might get it into one or two bookstores near your hometown, but it won't be in bookstores all across the country. That's something that most people aren't aware of. Um, number two is there's a stigma in that Everyone, anyone could be published P.O.D. My schnauzer has a wonderful book that he just published on how to meet other schnauzers. Four other schnauzers bought the book, you know, and that's about how many books usually get bought print on demand. I mean, it's a great thing to do if you want to do your poetry that no one cares about, your mother's recipes that nobody cares about. Um, but... The Today Show, New York Times, media, and other publishers know that you did it print on demand through Lulu or CreateSpace or whatever, which means anybody can do it. You just pay your 500 bucks and you got a book out. And that's why there are millions. I mean, I think Author Solutions has about 60,000 books a year that they do print on demand. Mm. The average book sells 100 or less, but they are making a fortune selling you crap you don't need. And I hate yeah. to be the bearer of bad news, <laughs> but that's the motto. So don't buy the other stuff. Just get it out now. If you actually sell a 1,000 or 2,000 or 10,000 books, now a traditional publisher or a hybrid publisher will come in and we can take over your contract because the good news is you own the intellectual property rights. You can get your books back. All right. Now, let's talk about the, the mid option. We had traditional here. 
POD here now is a mid, which is hybrid, <clears throat> which is what Morgan James Publishing is, morganjamespublishing.com, <clears throat> or there's several other publishers in our space. And it's kind of the best of those two worlds. Mm. We're known as a traditional publisher because, first and foremost, we have distribution. We mm. are... We are distributed by Ingram Publishing Services. Now, Ingram, as you probably know, is the biggest wholesaler in the world, based in Nashville. But they have a division, Ingram Publishing Services, IPS, that distributes books for about 100 publishers. Um, and actually, as a sales force, we have about 42 reps that sell our books in the stores around the country, just like Simon Schuster, Harper Collins. The second big difference is this. Lulu, create space, take anything and everything, just pay him the money. Mm -hmm. We get about 5,000 manuscripts a year. We accept about 150. Nonfiction, fiction, um, children's, and fake. We don't do poetry. Um, so we don't take everybody. That's the, uh, that's the other big distinction. POD accepts everybody, just pay him. Mm -hmm. With us and traditional publishers, we have a publishing board, and we vote on it and decide based on who you are and how we like the book, uh, whether we want to take it. Now, 80% of whether we take you on is based on how much we like you and you as an author and that book proposal and your platform and what you're going to do to, to you know, sell the book later on because we make money by selling books. The book can get edited. Um, so, you know, if, if it's good but not great, we can get an editor in to help, you know, edit the book. Yeah. We don't edit your book for you because we don't take your intellectual property rights. You keep your rights. So usually we recommend one of several different ghostwriters, editors, just to clean up the book. And one of the mm -hmm. most important things is you shouldn't edit your own book because you're yeah. too close to it. You need somebody <laughs> from the outside to edit it and make sure it's clean and really good and fix up the grammar and misspellings and all the other stuff. Um, we can get the book out in about, well, literally we can have the book done in about 10 weeks. That's how quickly, not a year or two years. No, hang on. Sorry, Rick, you were just about to give us the good news on how long it takes to get a book out and then we lost sound there. So could you just give us okay. that again? Can you hear me now? Okay. You got me? I, I, you're starting to come back. Let's try that again. Okay. All right. Sometimes the internet gets a little bit weird. Um, can you can you hear me now? You, I can hear you now. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, sometimes. Okay. So the connection. Oh, all right. So we can get a book out in as fast as ten weeks. Wow, that is fast. That's a That's lot faster than eighteen good. months to two years. Yeah. Exactly. Now the bookstores want us to do it about eight months away, but if you need it faster, we can have the book to the marketplace in about 10 weeks. So that's very fast. Mm. Um, in addition, so we don't take your rights, you know, but we have, we have the sales reps, et cetera. And we also work with you. We have several calls, which we call entrepreneurial vision mastermind calls and marketing calls where we teach you about marketing, and we kind of give you tools to do it yourself so you're not spending $10,000 a month on a PR firm. I mean, that's what I've taught my whole life. So I give you the tools to teach you how to do it yourself. Um, but I want you doing publicity yourself, you know, and, and for the book or else it's not going to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, so we're the, the middle ground. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You're known as a being with a New York publisher, a traditional publisher, which we don't mm -hmm. take everyone. So let's talk about an example um, yeah. of how it works. Uh, for instance, Brendan Bouchard came to our event, Author 101 University. By the way, the next one is in October. Just go to author101.com. Okay. You can see the next one's October 22 to 24 in Los Angeles. Um, and Brendan actually may be speaking. I'm not sure. JJ Virgin will be there. I don't know if you know JJ, but. Yeah, you know, well, I know. I've seen her through uh, Mike Koenigs and Brendan and people like that. Exactly. So she'll be there, and, and she's one of uh, Brendan's students. You know, But Brendan came to our event eight years ago, roughly. He was bankrupt, and he, he has told this story, but just he was upside mm. down. He, all he had was a book proposal. I met him, um, fell in love with the kid. 
I had in, I introduced him to Scott Hoffman. He was a friend of mine, literary agent. I invited to the event. Scott took him under his wing, redid his book proposal, sold his first book to Harper, San Francisco, which is now called Harper One, which was life's golden ticket. And mm -hmm. I worked on publicity on the book, did very well. Fast forward two years, he had a PBS show, which was about to be coming out, uh, and he needed a book fast. Harper said, well, we'll have it in two years if you'd like. Yeah. Um, he said, well, that doesn't work. I need it fast. So he came to us, and this was interesting. He wrote a book in 13 days in January. He gave us the book at Morgan James Publishing. He gave it to me on February 2nd. We published the book on March 2nd, one month later, and I went to number one in the New York Times on March 20th. Yeah. So, and that book was The Millionaire Messenger. So, um, and because that book went to number one and he owned the rights, we were then able to, and Scott Hoffman, actually his agent, sell that book and his next book to Simon Schuster for $2 million. And I can tell you that number because it's public knowledge. Everybody knows it. So when do you go to a major publisher when they're willing to give you $2 million? That's, <laughs> That's when. That's the earlier question, yeah. You know, or 100000 I mean, whatever number makes a difference in your life. Yeah. But, um, and then he did the charge with Simon Schuster. And interesting, he just told the story. He had a new book, which he was giving to them, and Simon Schuster said, we don't like it. And... They basically said, this is terrible, and they fired him, and he gave the money back, and he ended up uh, going to Hay House, and just and the book is still on the New York Times, which is, what's exact, the manifesto? I don't remember the exact title. Uh, yeah, the something I, manifesto. I have it here yeah. somewhere, but uh, <laughs> rrr, it's on my shelf. But, um, but that is the model that we, we were able to get Brendan out in a matter of weeks not years, and he was able to retain his rights so that he could sell his book to Simon Schuster for big money. Um, and he still did all the publicity and marketing and did internet, et cetera, but it's kind of the best of both worlds. Now for you, we're not gonna do it that fast. Again, we can get the book out in about 10 weeks. Probably we wanna wait about six, eight months to get bookstore distribution, but that's something that-, that Sorry, um, Ricky, we're, we're losing your sound um, again. Well, let me just so, see. If, uh, I'm going to take out my earphones. Is that Rick, can, can you hear, hear me? me better without yeah. the earphones? We've lost. We've lost your sound there. I think you were saying that uh, you were just going back to the fact that uh, you can get a book out in, in ten weeks, and then uh, and I lost <laughs> lost you what you were now? saying. I took that. out the earphones. Is that better? I can hear you again now. Okay. Well, let's stay with this then. All right. Uh, it's just the it's just the joy of the interweb. One day we'll have super fast, yep. super super fast broadband, and, and we'll look back on this and laugh. But <laughs> so, again, just to follow up what we were saying is that uh, we can get you out in about ten weeks. General publishing is eighteen months to two years. Um, even though we we can get you out in ten weeks, we probably want to wait to bring your book out from the time we acquire it. Usually about eight months or so, so we can get bookstore distribution because the bookstores want us to wait about eight months or so, um, unless you want to crash it. And many of our authors say, look, I don't want to wait for the bookstores. I want to crash the book. We'll do a big internet campaign and then we'll pull the bookstores along, which is mm. exactly what we did with Brendan. I mean, we brought it out right away. The bookstores said, well, we'll take the book in, in you know, a year. And we said, we're not waiting for you. We got an every bestseller list, and then they called back and said, look, we'll take the books right now. We want them in the stores right now. We said, fine. So I sometimes like to pull the bookstores along and not wait for them. Hmm. Um, all right, I'm going to stop there. That kind of gave you the three um, different ways of getting published, and I'll let you ask some questions and, uh, um, and go from there. Well, thanks for that, Rick. I've been taking lots of notes here, as you you can see. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I've read, uh, I'm, I'm just racking my brains for the, for the name of Brendan's latest book, but I've read all of Brendan's books, or I'm reading the latest one now. And uh, The Millionaire Messenger, which you mentioned, is, is a great book, and certainly recommend that to people. And, uh, you know, it's a great story to, to get it out, but, well, f to publish it, basically, w within a month from getting the manuscript. Uh, and... 
I'm just I'm looking. I think you've given us some, you know, lots of lots of really good stuff on the pros and cons. In terms of uh, in terms of the hybrid publishing that Morgan James does, how does that work with um, you know the numbers and royalties and things like that? Because obviously, uh, you know, with self publishing, you can you can get high royalties, but you don't have the same support. So there's a tr the trade off there. But it, with tr pure traditional publishing and the eighteen months, the royalties are, are even lower. So how does that work? Right, I, exactly. I mean, the royalties with traditional are are you have to negotiate. So um, let me explain how it works with us. We give a very small advance. I mean, mm -hmm. nothing to write home, just so you get a little advance. Um, with royalties with traditional publishers, I get royalties from McGraw Hill once every six months, um, and I generally, you know, and it's like seven and a half percent. I mean, it's very low. Uh, so I'm published, I have 18 books out with Adams Media, McGraw Hill, et cetera. With us, the way it works is this. So here's um, my book, once again, all right? This is a $20 book, let's just say, all right? Um, we get $10 back from the bookstore, from Amazon, from Barnes & Noble, et cetera. Mm. Um, you get 20% of what we get. So you're starting at $2 a book. And then we have, there. it's called escalation clause, where it goes up to a higher amount. You could get up to 25% and then 30%. So you get anywhere between $2 to $3 a book for a $20 book. Mm -hmm. um, and we pay, after the first six months, you get a statement um, every month, and you can see exactly how many books you're sold. And here's something interesting. I call McGraw-Hill. So how many books have been sold? Oh, we have to check. I don't know. We'll get back to you. We'll send you a statement in four months. Baloney. Four months, yeah. Books <laughs> in every day, every minute by minute, I can tell you exactly how many books have been sold to year and how many books were sold yesterday. We have that at our fingertips. I know exactly how many books are sold. I mean, so it's all, and we send you the report directly from BookScan. So it, it's, uh, you see everything. You get it every month after the first six months, uh, and we pay royalties every month, not every six months or every year. Um, and it's directly from our book scan. You know, what we get, we show you, and it's online. Mm. So it's very easy. You just get a link. Um, with uh, ebooks, very important is more and more books are being sold as an ebook on Kindle, et cetera. It used to be that you were getting 20%. We thought that wasn't fair. The Authors Guild thought that wasn't fair. So now we and most publishers are coming around and give you 50%. So if your book is sold on Kindle, uh, it's sold for roughly $10. We get roughly 6 to six and a half dollars And you get roughly $3.5 a book. So let's analyze that. You're mm -hmm. making more money if it's sold as an ebook than if it's sold in a bookstore. In a bookstore, you're getting about two dollars a book. As an ebook, you're getting about three and a quarter a book. Why? Because we don't have to print the book. It's all yeah. digital, and that makes more sense. And and I think more and more people are buying books, you know, online. They just uh, look it up, you know, on Amazon. They download it to their iPad. They download it to their Kindle, to their whatever Nook, you know, um, and they have it in five minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. Going to a bookstore. I mean, I've been to Barnes and Noble recently. Um, great place to go for a cup of coffee uh, and, and to get on the internet. And I did see that they have a few toys and puzzles there, but they don't have a lot of books anymore. So uh, if you want a book, the people have the experience, aren't they? Yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, uh, it and and it's sad. I mean, but it, it's like the last. When was the last time you bought a record on Tower Records? You know, they don't exist anymore. Now you just download it onto your iPhone um, or to whatever you know mm. device you have, and that's the way books are going to be. In fact, books will be in the future. If you want a, a real live book, that you go to a bookstore or you go to a to a mall, and I know they have it in London now, and all over the country, all over the world, and there are these machines where you just give them the title of the book, and they'll print the book up for you in about ten minutes. Yeah, it's inc it's incredible. I mean, I know that's old school, kind of an old school book, but it's incredible the technology that allows them to do that. When you compare that to having to buy thousands and have them stacked up in the garage, <laughs> that really is true print on demand. 
Yeah, we don't need it anymore. So, mm. so royalties, that's, that's how it works um, with us. Um, and every publisher is slightly different. Uh, but we, it, I think it's a fair model and also be paid every month instead of waiting six months or a year. And you can see, you can call us. I mean, we can, we'll, we can tell you every day exactly how many books were sold yesterday. Every, every publisher can do that. So if they say, oh, we don't know, they're lying to you. Uh, mm. Believe me, they know. Uh, yeah. But that's how the royalties work. An advance, by the way, is just a, a loan against future royalties. So uh, you don't make any royalties until you pay back the advance. So the advance, I mean, unless, again, they're giving you a $2 million advance, it's, it's you know, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, uh, you got to earn back your royalties anyway. And in traditional publishing, less than 20% of authors actually earn back you know, or earn out their royalties uh, and actually ever get a royalty check. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's nice to have the money. The, the nice news is you don't have to give it back. If you don't earn back your your, your advance, yeah. you don't have to give the money back. But we all can see that you didn't earn out and it will be hard to get another publishing deal if indeed you haven't uh, earned back your, your advance. So okay. it's, it's a slippery slope. But the good news is there's lots of new options. We yeah. don't have to do it the way we did it in the 30s. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's it's interesting times. Certainly, it's it's fascinating the way that the industry is is changing so dramatically. And and there's a you know between those two extremes, uh, you know, obviously self publishing is is a lot better than it used to be as well. But between those two extremes, there's that hybrid model and different sort of forms of partnership publishing. Just a couple of things. Just want to uh, touch on you know in the, the time we got left, Rick is um. Uh, in terms of, you know, if somebody's a self-published author, and you touched on this a little bit, but uh, uh, what sort of platform size and what sort of sales numbers would start to get a, a hybrid or a traditional publisher interested if somebody's already gone down that self-publishing route? Okay, great. Um, I would like, I mean, it depends on, on the publisher. For us, you don't have an enormous, you don't need to have a huge platform. Uh, and that's the good news. Um, but I need you to be able to learn about your platform and learn how to start building a platform and at least have your websites in place and be willing to do the work. And platform mm -hmm. is an everyday thing. I mean, you, um, you have to work on it all the time. So, you know, I need you to have sites. I need you to start doing publicity. Um, but you don't have to have 100,000 people on your list. Um, Scott Hoffman, who is trying to make deals for at least $100,000 or more, says, in a nutshell, you need to have a relationship with at least 100,000 people. Okay, so that's for a big deal. Yeah. 100,000 people need to know you, you know, be following on Twitter, Facebook, on your list, et cetera, for him to take you on. Now, that's the top end. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I just, I need you to have, I need you to have a website or several websites. I need you to be on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, um, and, and be posting all the time. I need you to, to start doing some radio and TV, um, and, and learning, uh, in terms of taking it over them. from a self-published, uh, if you were published by CreateSpace, I need you to have sold at least a couple of thousand books for me to yeah. be interested. Mm -hmm. So don't come to me and say, oh, I've sold 50 books. That means your relatives bought it. So that would be, you know, for me to take it over, and I take over a lot of books that were self-published mm -hmm. by, again, CreateSpace and iUniverse and, and Lulu and et cetera. But I need you to, you know, at about 2,000 books, it starts to get interesting. As long as I know that down the road, you're, you're going to do something. Yeah. Okay. And is that two thousand uh, physical copies or two thousand ebook or two? As long as you combined? can prove it to me. Yeah. If you sold it as an ebook, fine. Physical book, fine. But I just need proof. Here, here's something to understand. Okay. Is that this is your ISBN number right here? Okay. That is your license plate for your book. <laughs> I can go in. Every, any moment and see exactly how many books have been sold to date. Ebooks, physical books, etc. Now, if you order the books 
um, from CreateSpace and sell them yourself on a, um, you know, in the back of the room, uh, that's okay, but I need proof that you actually sold them. Not just the receipt that you bought them from CreateSpace. You can say, well, here's a receipt. I bought 2,000 books. They could all be sitting in your garage. So I need proof that you actually sold the books. So, but usually what we're going to do is go on, uh, on what's on this ISBN here and check it out uh, on BookScan and see how many books have been sold. So uh, uh, if indeed you actually sold the books and, and I have proof on it through BookScan, we're good. Um, nice. Otherwise, books you sold, I need proof you actually sold. Okay. And then just final final thing, Rick, before we wrap up. And, um, you know, you talk about, I think, the entrepreneurial side of the publishing that you do, working with authors and entrepreneurs. And um, so, I mean, great, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's great that you've got, you, you have this entrepreneurial-friendly publishing house. Maybe just uh, do you help the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneur authors with their strategies as well because of course it's not just royalties that people uh, you know you monetize a book through royalties is that's part of it but there's a whole back end thing and brendan's a, a perfect uh, case study isn't he it's somebody who's done a tremendous job of, of marketing the book and building a back-end business from that well yes and that's that's why people come to us is is really we we look at the author as a partner and the author is involved every step of the way with the cover design, the interior design, when we bring out the book, the pricing of the book. And we are coaching um, the author every step of the way on marketing, on back end, on websites. On, uh, and here's the reality is, and Brendan teaches this, and I've taught it for 20 years, not 35 years, really. Is that you don't make <laughs> money with the book. Yeah. That's just the reality. Um, Brendan made with Millionaire Messenger, we sold about 50,000 books on the launch. Fine, he made some money on it, but he made millions on the back end. And that's what we teach authors is that you're, the book's the tool. You may make some money with it. You're not going to make a huge amount because the finances are stupid. You know, you make, if you're lucky, you know, you're making two, three dollars a book. But, uh, but it's the tool to get you on radio, on TV, for the credibility, and to get people to your back end to opt in, to take your courses, to take your you know, seminars, to do your self-publishing summit, et cetera. Um, and that's where you make the money. And that's where our coaching comes in as we teach, we work with the author on building their platform, building their back end, understanding the book is the tool and the credibility, we want a good book. We want something we can be proud of. Mm. We want, you know, a gorgeous cover. We want a great title. We want it, you know, we want you to have several books. Most authors publish two, three, four books with us. Um, so it's just the beginning. I mean, I, I'm the lousiest writer in the world. <laughs> um, I, you know, and in another call, we'll talk about writing a book and how we do it. But I just had my 18th book come out. I've sold you know, hundreds of thousands of books over the years, and I can't even write. So what we, you know, work with with authors is that we'll get you an editor to help you write the book. We'll teach you how to talk your book. We'll teach you how to build your platform and understand the book is the tool to get people to your back end and where you're going to make the real money. Mm. Um, and also, you know, help you build your career as well. Um, yeah. You know, we have doctors, lawyers, et cetera, who are all doing it. So um, that's why you're doing the book. And if the book sells a hundred thousand copies, wonderful, but that's not, you know, something that, that we're expecting the average book. If it sells 5,000 copies, it's a good day. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's great that you do that with the authors. I think, you know, really, because one of the things that I hear over and over from traditionally published authors is the frustration of losing control and, uh, work with a publishing house that doesn't get the commercial aspect of what they're trying to do. You know, they have no say over the cover, the pricing, the strategies, the marketing, anything, which is, as you say, you, you work with the authors through all of those processes, which is great. So Rick, a huge, huge thank you for all of the, the information you shared with us. And, and obviously you've sort of taken us through a lot of the process, but just give us again, um, 
some of the resources you mentioned the the, the website you mentioned your rolodex uh, author 101 you you've shown us a number of times uh, where should people go to follow up with you i agree the easiest out? thing by the way my email is rick at rickfrishman.com i actually answer all emails <laughs> Uh, go to rickfrishman.com, get my million dollar Rolodex. It's, it's Everything's there. Um, go to author101.com. You can also get the Rolodex there. And our next event is, uh, is in October. Um, uh, a few of the sites was uh, rickscheapdomains.com. Get your URLs. Cheapest place I know of on the internet because we don't, we don't mark it up. Um, uh, the Rick's. Uh, bookproposalwiz.com where you can get your book proposal done. Uh, rickswebsolution.com uh, That's where I send out all my emails, etc. And uh, um, it's uh, and you get free training on how to do it. Um, and you see that how I've kind of branded myself, Rick's, Rick's, Rick, and that's yeah. a lesson, things that you should do yourself. Uh, I have a newsletter comes out every Sunday. And Sunday tips, once you get my Rolodex, you'll get that newsletter automatically that has lots of free tips. Um, but if you have any questions, and obviously morganjamespublishing.com, we just talked about the three different models. That's all up there on our site. Right on the top, just there's a, a link called compare page where we compare all the three different types of publishing. Mm. Everything we, I just walked you through is right there. Um, mm. And this is and, critical uh, stuff, I think, everybody. Stuff, just go to Rick Frischman and, and send me an email, and I will email you back. And uh, um, I'm actually, uh, I hate people who have secretaries and say, you know, if you want to talk, I'll talk to you next week. You mm -hmm. know, if you go to rickfrischman.com, you send me an email, I answer you. If the phone number that's on the bottom, that goes right to my cell phone. So I don't make appointments, basically. If you want to call me, just call me. And if I'm busy, I'll call you back. Okay. And that's the way I roll, and and so uh, and and there's a tip for you as well. So yeah, yeah. So fantastic, thank you, Rick. And I think you know all that stuff that the, the traditional, the self-publishing, the hybrid publishing. I think just having that understanding, and you've given us that this fantastic overview, is critical for every aspiring author, and for everybody who's published already, because you know unless you know that, you just don't know what your options are, and there are some. Fa <coughs> Excuse me. Right. There are some fabulous, fabulous options out there. So I want to say a big, big thank you, Rick, for being right. part of the Self Publishing Summit, and a big thank you for sharing all that great information with us. All right, thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Cheers, Rick. Bye bye.